This program uses data from Statistics Canada and numerous OECD comparison studies. For over 40 years, the OECD has been one of the world's largest, most reliable sources of comparable statistics and unbiased and nonpartisan economic and social data. The 30 countries listed below are the members of the OECD. Currently, 21 of the 30 OECD countries have lower poverty rates than Canada. In GDP per capita, Canada stands ninth of all OECD countries. But per capita figures can be misleading. If, for example, you have 11 individuals, 10 of whom make $10,000 per year, and one who makes a million, the per capita figure is $100,000 per year which sounds impressive, but it masks the distribution of wealth. This Statistics Canada survey chart says it all. 70% of the wealth in Canada belongs to the top 20% of Canadians. 80% of Canadians have access to the 30% leftovers. The bottom 40%, close to half of all Canadians, have access to only 2.4% of all wealth. A pie chart reflects this disparity even more dramatically. In 1980, 86% of unemployed Canadians received unemployment insurance. Now it's under 40% of Canadians. And of the 30 OECD countries, we are 22nd in how unemployment insurance reimburses people for their lost income. The lowest 94% of all families in Canada owns the grand total of 3% of family wealth in this country. A 2003 UN Human Development Report, considering the percentage of population below the poverty line, places Canada almost at the bottom. To a far greater extent than in the past, the issue of economic justice and income distribution is off the radar screen of our politicians, leaving huge numbers living in poverty. We are struck by the way in which the minimum wage was deliberately allowed to fall, despite the fact that the minimum wage plays a key social and anti-poverty role. Workers' wages have not risen for years. Not so, however, for corporate profits, which we shall take a look at in a moment. Thomas Wacom writes that the plight of those on welfare in Canada is shameful. It is criminal. Successive governments have gutted or eliminated much of Canada's vaunted social safety net. Canada is the only G8 country without a national housing strategy. Worse, there is a lack of political will to develop one, despite a growing homelessness crisis and huge waiting lists for subsidized housing across the country. The Mulroney government cut spending on federal housing by two billion. The Chrétien government downloaded housing to the provinces. The Martin government abolished the housing ministry. And there is nothing forthcoming from the current Harper government. The first food bank opened in Edmonton in 1981. It was thought to be a temporary measure. By 1988, there were 159 food banks across Canada, and in 2008, 649. These food banks, servicing the poorest of the poor, the most vulnerable in our society, 
get no or very little help from government agencies. Do we have enough doctors? During the years 1990 to 2004, in terms of the number of doctors per 100,000 people, Canada stood far down the list of all countries in an appalling 54th place. And following from this, it should come as no surprise that only four countries are worse in their infant mortality rate than Canada. In continental Europe, poverty has been reduced by 40% through social spending. In the Nordic countries and the Netherlands, the impact has been even greater. How disgraceful it is for Canada, with the ninth highest GDP per capita, to be so uncaring in the welfare of its own men, women and children compared to so many other developed countries. Of the 30 OECD countries, we're 25th in social spending. There's 24 other OECD countries that spend more than we do in social spending. If Canada's social spending rose just to match the average spent by the countries of the European Union, we would have an additional $95 billion for social spending in many areas of our economy. So the argument that social programs should be cut is ridiculous. Public opinion polls consistently show that the majority of Canadians put social programs at or near the top of their list of priorities, far ahead of tax cuts, debt repayment, or defense spending. To combat poverty in Canada, we could raise the minimum wages or provide an earned income supplement. We could stop taxing people with very low income, revitalize the unemployment insurance program, stop provincial clawbacks of child benefits, create affordable rental housing programs, increase social assistance benefits, expand job training, develop a workable child care program provide more funds for university tuitions.